CarlRack.com presents How to Handle the Pressure of Bagging Your Own Groceries at the Supermarket There can be a lot of pressure having people wait for you at the cashier or self-checkout. Supermarkets are decreasing or have eliminated the service of baggers, who were traditionally called bag boys or bag girls, meant as a courtesy to expedite your visit through the cash registers. Now, customers are forced to pack their own groceries alone stuck with the bill, and left holding the bag. It's the current state of the modern consumer. But, time is precious in our busy world, and the last thing anyone wants to do is wait patiently for others in a lineup. Whether it be in a man checkout, or people waiting throw shade on the slowness of the cashier. Or, at a self-checkout where others in the queue give you the stink eye for diligently reading every prompt on screen, finding the correct variety of Apple listed, or checking all six sides of a box to find the UPC code to scan yourself through. At least with the self-checkout, the disappointment of total strangers is your only worry. You still have your space and time to get through the transaction, surrounded by a few others saddled with the same burden as you. However, when you are at the mercy of a cashier, they will rush you through the till, forcing you to multitask by bagging on the fly, keeping track of your items, and having your payment ready. In a matter of minutes, when the cashier asks how would you like to pay, you'll find yourself with an open bag in one hand with hastily packed perishables and your payment in the other hand with your wallet or purse wedged in your armpit. Here are ways to handle the pressure of self-bagging at the grocery store. Set the tone. If you have a hand basket with 12 items or less, place it back in the designated stack located around the register. The stack may be at the front of the checkout or may be on the way out, so ensure you have a hand free for this task unless the cashier or another employee offers to take it from you. This will signal to others that you are a courteous person and should set expectations for those that are behind you. Conveyor Belt Organization If you have more than the express quantity of 12 items, you are most likely to have a shopping cart. You'll want to remove your purchases from the cart and sort it on the pre-scan conveyor as per your bagging intentions. Consider boxed goods placed together. Fruits and vegetables, dairy and cold foods all clustered around each other. Bath and household items together, etc. This will provide organization to your solo bagging, speeding things up and limiting any problem solving during the bagging stage. Avoid the shopping cart shimmy. While entering the register lane, most shoppers are behind their carts, pushing in. The push is not ideal as you will block the exit aisle for customers during your bagging process. A common scenario involves an old lady breaking her hip by meandering into yours. At which point you will have to hastily navigate to the exit by maneuvering the narrow gap between the till and shopping cart. Then, before any witnesses assess the situation you try to shimmy the cart closer to your till so first-aiders can begin work on the old lady you may have crippled. The cart shimmy involves lifting the near end of the cart and maneuvering it tight to the till. This could result in injury to yourself. Make it a habit to unload your groceries from in front of the cart. This allows for a safer bagging environment. It also keeps a tighter workspace for bagging and good physical separation between you and the shoppers behind you. Bringing your own bags There is an added stress of having to bring your own bags and a real fear of not having brought enough. You don't want the awkwardness of interjecting yourself in the middle of the next person's transaction to ask to pay for more bags. They'll have to pause that current transaction and ring you through again for 5 cents. There is also the concern of the cashier giving you extra bags for free because of pity. No self-respecting person should want to use the pity bags. Your issue is not that you can't afford the bag. It's that you bought too much stuff. When you bring bags from home, occasionally you may just grab a handful indiscriminately, and when you pull the ball of bags apart, you might be embarrassed by the logo of one of them. Whether it's from a competitor, a free bag given to you at a pub crawl, or something inappropriate for the environment you are in. Remember that purchase you made from the adults-only store? Well, it turns out you didn't put that bag in the trash can, after all. Buying bags. Of course not all of us recycle and reuse, or just aren't prepared for shopping, so we have to purchase plastic bags. Just as busy as you are, the cashier wants to move things along as quickly as possible. 
When you buy plastic bags, expect the cashier to toss them on your purchases like a middle-aged man throwing his smelly socks around the living room after work. It's hard to find the opening on a brand new plastic shopping bag, as they are pressed together so tight, the perforation is not exposed for quick opening. This is not ideal for a solo bagger. You may find the queue of a checkout line form behind you quickly on a busy Saturday afternoon. This could lead to bagging anxiety. Don't allow panic to set in, as this will slow down your bagging rate, allowing your incompetence to feed any negativity from the other annoyed shoppers. Instead, as you stand there foolishly fumbling away with this plastic drooling on the conveyor belt like you just had a lobotomy, take a couple of deep breaths to refocus and reframe your mind. Dismiss the anxiety with those deep breaths. Then wet your forefingers and thumb with your drool, and pinch rub the top of the bag, close to the base of the handles. Anticipate the stop and pay. When you start pre-bagging as the cashier scans your remaining items, you'll find yourself in a situation where you have to stop and pay. This nullifies any rhythm or progress you made. The process will involve stopping everything you are doing, taking out your payment method, and collecting your receipt then glancing down at it to see if you got the discount on the pomegranate juice and putting it all back to resume your bagging. As you are going through all that, the cashier is scanning the next customer's items, having it encroach on your conveyor space before you're done packing. Ensure you have your payment ready and avoid cash if possible. Pre-bag the most complicated large volume items so you can resume by stuffing smaller purchases randomly into filled bags. You're not an expert. People like to go to the grocery store to stare at others and judge strangers. It's part of what makes us human. So, don't be discouraged by people noticing your method of bagging. Customers behind you will naturally judge you for how you're packing your items. Remember, you aren't an expert at this. They may be silently critical of you packing household chemicals with your fruits and vegetables, but they don't see the genius of you packing the maxi pads with the eggs to cushion them and contain a spill. Extra bags. It's hard enough guessing how many bags you need to purchase before packing your stuff. If you find you have an extra bag or two, you have some options. You can remove an item from another bag and fill it partially, taking it home to reuse next time you shop. Or, you can use it to hide your open beer during your child's Christmas concert. You can kindly offer it to the next person as well. But, be aware of the fact that the cashier may have already asked them how many bags they wanted. You may be coming in too late with the extra bag offer. Avoiding eye contact. You don't want to visually engage with the customers behind you in the line. It will be emotionally counterproductive for you to see the extent of the line formation. The annoyance of others waiting in line will only direct negativity onto you. When going grocery shopping, bring along a pair of dark sunglasses or wear a ball cap with a visor to limit your line of sight and hide your face. A clean exit. On the way out, ensure you have bagged in such a way that you still have one hand free to have the receipt exposed in your hand so staff don't think you stole the bagged groceries. Then, try to look for acknowledgement from staff or security manning the exit. This positive connection you make with staff will provide them the confidence to allow you to leave without checking your bags if you happen to set off the security alarm.